What's up, guys? Welcome back to Weld.com. Be sure to be checking us out on that Weld app because we've got things rolling in there every single day. I'm your host, Dr. Welds, and today we got a cool episode on alloy wheel repair. More specifically, cast aluminum. Let's get rolling into this repair. All right, before we can really dive into this repair, we've got to kind of think to ourselves, how did it break in the first place? Let's see the damage, let's assess the situation. And we've got a really cool story behind this wheel here. It doesn't look, it looks like it's seen a thing or two, right? It's, uh, it's got some stories to tell and that's because it does. This came off of a car, a Honda Civic from the Level Crew, Level Crew with a K. These guys drift Honda Civics all around the track. And uh, you, know, you, can, you can expect that these wheels are gonna see their fair share of you know, torture. So they, uh, they went about, you know, trying to get this to us so that we can kind of give a good, see what, uh, assess the damages here. And we've got a, a nice crack, two solid cracks. And you never know after we really get into it and really start cleaning this thing, you never know what we're gonna find. We're also gonna die pin it so that we can really assess the damages on this here rim. So someone tried to give it a fix and I've got some grinding to do. We've got a bunch of, looks like JB Weld, just smeared on there. These guys were in a bind and they needed a quick fix. So they went and just JB welded the snot out of this thing. So, you know, we're gonna do our best. We're gonna fix this thing right up, get it right back on the track. Next thing we gotta learn is what tools do we need? Aluminum can be a pretty tricky material to weld, but it actually really is fairly simple if you follow the right steps. So we're gonna go over each tool that we need, uh, the essentials basically, to doing this repair. So the first thing's first, we gotta clean all that gunk off. That gunk's really on there and there's paint and everything on there. We gotta get down to nice clean bare metal. And these aluminum burr bits is gonna do that trick for us. I got a couple of them. I got that one, then I've got this 90 degree one that's got a little bit of dig to it. So we've gotta, we're gonna get into that material with these. And then once we've really cleaned things up and kind of uh, located the crack, we're gonna actually do a little bit of penetrant testing. So we've got our penetrant, our cleaner, and our, oh, car cleaner, and our developer from Contesco. We're gonna use these to help locate the cracks and the, how severe they actually are, because you never know how far they may go. Once we've located those cracks, we're gonna get our, us a drill, drill into the ends of those cracks so that they don't propagate or grow. We don't want those cracks to grow any further, and if we just weld right over top, they could still crack underneath. So we wanna stop that crack in its tracks. So after we've got all that located, we've got some stuff on there, even from the drill going in and into the cracks, we've got to clean this material again. So we might go over it with a flap wheel. Might go over a little bit with this. Probably not because this can impregnate the material with other things. We do have a new flap wheel, so that might be the case. Or we might just go back to the burr bit. After the burr bit, we're going to go with our acetone and our stainless steel wire brush. This is a really key component here. A little bit of brushing, a lot of bit of brushing, and a good bit of acetone so that we can really make sure that the material is as clean, clean, clean as possible. And that's what's gonna be the trick to welding this repair. Of course, we've got our PPE, we've got our Game Changers by Blue Demon, and we've got our welding hood that we're gonna be used. We've got us a long sleeve cotton shirt on, uh, welding cap, all the PPE that's necessary. And then of course, we're gonna be TIG welding this today. So now that we kind of know all the tools and before we jump into the machine settings, I wanna go into a little bit of the science behind what this wheel is maybe made out of and what should we weld it with. You typically, when it comes to aluminum wheels, you've got two ways of doing it. You can either have forged wheels or you can have cast aluminum wheels. Now, casting is a little different than forging. Forging usually starts with a, a large block of material and they heat it up and they press it into whatever shape it may be. A lot similar to forge welding, as you may know. So they'd usually make it out of a solid piece of aluminum. So forged pieces are typically pretty solid. Now cast is different. That cast is actually molten aluminum poured into a shape, into a mold. And you can have a lot more porous activity going on inside the structure of the material when welding cast. As far as the weldability of different, the two, you may see a little bit of a difference. Uh, cast is known for being very, very dirty because of all those pores inside of it. Now, how do we know what this is? Well. Oh yeah, that's forged. You know what I know how I can tell? It says it right here, forged. 
So we know that it's a forged wheel. So let's, uh, let's take it on over and let's maybe clean some th things up. We also need to go over what kind of filler metals we're gonna be using. So we've got a bunch of filler metal here from Blue Demon. We've got a few flavors that we're gonna walk through today. Now, all three of these wet, uh, filler metals can be used for this procedure. But we do want to kind of dive into what each of these kind of mean and what they're usually used for so that we can make our best educated guess on which one to use. First off, we want to go over the numbering classifications. So we've got four numbers on these aluminum filler metals. That first number, for example, on 5356 here is a five. All right, that's going to be your main alloying element in this particular filler metal. Now, the last two numbers here are going to be the point in percentage after 99 of the purity of the aluminum. So it'll be 99.53% pure aluminum. Those are what those last two digits means. Now, what this second digit means after the five is the special modification to that original alloy that they put in. So we kind of kind of know about what each of these mean. The four for 4043 is silicon. Now, silicon is a main deoxidizer and also a scavenger. So it really does keep things clean as far as helping with weldability and everything like that. And at the last two numbers being 43, it's 99.43% 99.43 99 pure aluminum. So now that we know what they all mean, all, all these numbers can stand for, now let's go into the differences between each one of these. Now, 4043, like I said, has that silicone in it and is suitable for service temps above 150 degrees. Now, 5356 is not suitable for a higher temperature working. So we've got to kind of think about that when we're going to weld this, that if it, the part is going to be subject to higher heats, we not, might need to go with 4043. Now, 4043 also, typically people are saying, uh, and what I've seen too, is the weldability is a little bit smoother when welding uh, AC aluminum TIG with this particular filler metal compared to 5356. Now, 5356 having the added tensile strength and corrosion resistance, makes it a little bit stronger, right? So 4043 has lower ductility and shear strength than 5356. 4043 is softer, and 5356 is preferred for gas metal arc welding because it is a little bit more sturdy. Now, 4043 does not color match anodizing. What that means, if you plan on anodizing this part, 4043 is gonna have a different color than the anodization that you're trying to put on it. It might look a little dull or gray. So if you plan on anodizing, 4043 probably isn't the tr trick. Now, 4943, otherwise known as 4043A, is used for a lot of similar procedures as 4043. Now, the difference is it doesn't depend on dilution to the base metal. And what that means, it doesn't need the base metals added alloys to the filler to make it a strong weld. Now, this helps by adding 25 higher ultimate tensile strength and 50% higher yield strength. So this makes it a pretty tough rod, this 4943 here. What I decided to weld with today is this 4943. And the reason why is because I think it might be the happy medium between the 5356 and the 4043. I did some practice welding here. Now you can see that I did all three different types of filler metals here. As far as weldability, it wasn't too much of a difference for my own opinion. Uh, so I'm really pleased to go with this 4943. Fun fact. If you couldn't tell between the 4043 and 5356 and they're just laying around your shop, here's a little fun fact for you. Dustin Apple and Dusty from uh, Pacific Art Tig taught me this. You gotta listen closely. This one had a sharper ting to it, right? Ting. Boom. Ting. The 5356 is the tingier one, right? And the 4043 is gonna be that duller sound. Just a fun little fact there. We've got to clean this wheel up. So like I said, it's got paint, it's got Bondo or whatever the heck it is, JB Weld. So we're gonna get into it this spur bit and it's gonna make a mess. So I'm gonna end up using my hood as a face shield uh, so that I don't get a bunch of stuff in my face. A oil spray was nice enough to send over this mask cleaner. Uh, it's, let's check it out, you know, just spray it on the lenses there. It's also, it's kind of like one of those you just spray on everything just to clean it. What is, what it? Oh, that smells amazing. That smells like a mother's hug right there. Oh, look at that bunch of nasty in there. Doesn't take off my, my customization. Oh man, it just smells so good. All right, I'm excited to put my hood on. All right, let's grind something. Oh, it's getting down my back. Hey, luckily this shirt's got a hood on it. I'm hooding up. I may look goofy, but I won't have burrs down my back. 
All right, so we've got it all cleaned up. Now we're gonna go about doing some dye penetrant testing. Now, if you look at the part and what we've cleaned, it's not exactly really easy to be confident where this crack is located. So that's why I'm dye pinning it today. It's not a necessary step, but we're gonna use this Contesco brand uh, dye pin. We're gonna use the cleaner first. So to clean the surface, real nice and clean, wipe it down. All right, now that that's all taken care of, now we can use our penetrant. Now, we're gonna use this penetrant and we're gonna spray it on. And we've gotta let this sit for at least 10 minutes. Now it says on the can about five, but the longer the dwell, the more obvious these defects or discontinuities, these cracks are gonna be. So we're gonna do it on this side. And then we're gonna go ahead and do it on this side as well. Oh, it's drippy. All right, it's been dwelling for about 10 minutes now. So now we're gonna go back to the cleaner. Get that all off, get it real clean. You can see some of that penetrant seeping out of that crack already. It's a wonderful rag. And now we can spray on the developer. So we can start to see what comes to life now. What I'm seeing here is being that these are about the size of the drill bit that I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna drill right into these and really start wallering them out with my die grinder and basically making this a much bigger repair than these cracks that are here. I'm gonna grind the entire crack out. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark the location just so I don't forget. Probably all of this is gonna be at least some welding being done on this area. All right, so we've got the indication here. It's clear as day after a second of it sitting, the developer sitting on there, we've got our penetrant pulling through and uh, we have know we found the location of this crack. We're gonna do a similar thing. We're gonna do a basically a pad repair over the top of this after we've ground into that crack and basically ground it completely out. So we've gotta go back to the die grinder, do a little bit more prep and then brushing and then acetone and then we're ready to weld. The dye pin is all done. We've got it all off. I still don't know what that cleaner is made out of, so I'm gonna go ahead and take over it with some trusty acetone. I've got my gloves on. We're gonna get that on a, a clean uh, rag and just kind of get in there a little bit and make sure that we get this material nice and clean. Get in that hole. Make sure you don't see any type of indications or maybe some schmutz, right? We're going to get that all off. All that contamination is stuff that we've got to get off of that wheel. All right, now that the brushing's done, we're going to run the acetone over it one more time, and then we'll go check out these machine settings. Today, we're going to be using the Miller Dynasty. We've got our amp set to about 180 amps, and we're on a high frequency start with our foot pedal. So our foot pedal is going to give us full range from just about zero all the way up to 180. So I may not need all this 180, maybe to get started, but once this wheel gets a little bit warmer, it's gonna be a little, we won't need all that amperage. We're using that high frequency start, the 2T, we, we only have the one step down. And then all these other wavelengths, we're not gonna really touch. We've got our pre-flow set to 1.5 and then our post-flow set to 10. And then on our AC balance, we've got it set to about 70, you know, perfect AC frequency. We're at 110 hertz. The torch that I'm going to be using today is the Miller torch that comes with it. We've got a long rooster tail cap to it. We've got our collet body style gas lens and cup with the Pyrex cup, about a size seven or eight. And then we have our E3 332 tungsten. That's it. Let's get to welding.
So flipping it over, we can see what we've done through, through the actual wheel itself. The edges, you can see are nice and blistered up and it's fused together well. You can see we've got a bunch of trashy stuff in the middle. So that's what we're gonna grind out. We're actually gonna flatten this back out to you know clean it all up, even if we had to dish it up some. So now we got some backing from welding on the other side. Now we're gonna grind this all away, redo this side. We're probably gonna go ahead and clean things again uh, in order to put these next pad welds and complete this repair. <laughs> Blue Demon Game Changers. Barely felt that. Just saw my hand on fire. It must have been the acetone left on it. Jesus. So we've got the repair done on the back side here. We've got a couple pad welds. This welded a lot cleaner than the other side. Maybe it's because there was a big hole there or whatever it may be. Now we're going to take it at the extra mile and I want to make sure that this repair is sound. So I'm going to actually sand this down a little bit more clean it and brush it some more both sides. And then I'm just gonna really lay some pad welds all throughout this area, just in case those cracks were a little bit bigger than I expected. I didn't see anything with the die pin, but like I said, we're gonna make sure that this air, if it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak somewhere else than here. All right, now we've got this sucker welded solid. <laughs> you might call it overkill, but we've put a lot of material on this on this repair. And that's again, just to ensure things are just hunky dory, right? Now I'm no spin doctor, but I'm sure this might throw off some sort of, you know, balance in the wheel. Maybe this drifter is gonna be drifting right instead of left. I don't know. I am gonna blend this down a little bit and then we're gonna throw some high heat paint over it. Nothing special. This wheel isn't gonna get powder coated or anything, but I do wanna at least cover up the repair. That'll do. That's it for today's episode, guys. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. And go check us out on the Weld app. Follow me on the Weld app as Austin Hargett. And I'll follow you back. There's a lot of tons of people in there, uh, all networking and really just a great place to meet new welders and learn yourself. So go check out that Weld app, guys. This video is gonna be on there if you haven't seen it already. Mm -hmm.